Good to see you, good to see you guys. Christopher tricked me, he lied to me. He said that nobody wears suits out here. You can go in and jeans and a flannel. So I thought I would, I thought I would try, like, like, that it looked like I tried. So I looked like I tried. No, I wasn't planning on being here, so we're out visiting family. And so uh, this was the best I could do. Uh, I know you guys all look sharp and beautiful and all that stuff. So thanks for letting me be in your presence, not dressed WFG. But I hope to add some value today. Uh, to you guys uh, and tell a little bit about my story. Some of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, and so I hope that uh, some of the things I share with you today will be both inspirational as well as very practical. Okay, so uh, Christopher said I'm not the biggest technology guy here, but let me see if I can screen share this, my phone here. Let's see if this will work. Oh, what's the airplane code? Oh, oh. See, that's how much I know about that. Okay, as long as I have an Apple, everything everything's should be good. So hopefully this will work. So, um, is that is that shared? Okay. All right. So I, you know, I've been here a long time. I've known Chris from the business for many, many years, and uh, this is where I start out. This is the best I could do as far as photos of where I came from. Let me see if I can pull this up. Okay. There we go. We'll leave that for a while. So I worked for American Airlines uh, as a mechanic for about 14 years. You can see there where I started in the late 80s, a long, long time ago. And uh, I started, uh, you know, in, in the late 80s, I you know, wanted to work on airplanes, didn't want to fly them, I wanted to work on them. So that's what I did for 14 years. And uh, how I got to this company, I'm thankful for American Airlines because uh, I don't think I would be here if it wasn't for that company because there was a guy, here's how I was recruited. Like, so many of us have these experiences of coming to the BPM, seeing the story of our company, understanding what we do, and going, man, nobody would not want to do this. Like, everybody should be fired up about this. Like, that's why all of you are here. But then reality hits you in the face as you start to talk to people you know, and they're, they're going, what are you doing? Like, you're crazy. I Googled that, and that's a scam, and all this stuff that we hear. And, and again, I'm kind of preaching to the choir because you're here, but if you've not experienced it yet, your warm market's not always the most positive, right? That's right. And so, uh, and so Steve, this guy, Steve Moss, so Ed Milet's, let me see if I can do this. Ed Milet's wife, Christiana, has a half-sister named Millie, who's married to Steve Moss. So Steve Moss was the guy that I worked with at American Airlines, and uh, I was complaining one day about the job and about our union contract and about a bunch of stuff. That's what employees do, right? We complain right. about stuff. And so Steve uh, it comes up to me kind of sheepishly and, and, and fearfully, stuttering and stammering and wondering how he's going to get the words out and says, uh, hey, and I, all I had heard from Steve was about his brother-in-law and how his brother-in-law is super successful, baseball player slash business plans. Uh, businessman slash everything, and uh, and he uh, and he he says, hey, my brother-in-law wants to talk to you. It didn't come out that smooth. It was really really stubborn and stammery. And I'm like, why would your brother-in-law want to talk to me? Like for what? Why? And they start grilling Steve about this. And and finally, I just felt so sorry for him because I kind of beat him up. I was that guy. I was that negative guy. I said, fine, Steve, whatever. And I just gave him my phone number. You know, and so Ed Milet calls me. This was the late 90s, probably at like 97 or so. Ed was with Primerica. That's actually where I started was with Primerica with Ed. And then as Ed left Primerica and came over to what used to be WMA, which turned to WFG, I was, I was recruited and kind of up in that, in that wave with Ed. And like Christopher said, um, you know, I was at the right place at the right time but didn't realize it. Right? I was around all the right leaders in all the right situation but didn't take advantage of it. I was more, more concerned about complaining about what wasn't going right and all the challenges in business. And, you know, as Christopher said, I lived in Torrance, and his office was out here in the Inland Empire somewhere. I think it was Walnut. He started off in Walnut. It was over in Pomona and different areas like that. So I'd have to drive out here, try to get guests out here. It never worked. Uh, and just, you know, had the frustrations that a lot of you go through. But here's the thing that I want to, you know, I want to encourage you guys with. No matter what your choice is, whatever path you're on now, some of you are on the WFG path committed. Some of you are on the WFG path still checking it out, toe in the water, seeing if we'll just see how it goes. That's your mantra. We'll just see how it goes. Um, by the way, nothing, nothing of any great significance is going to happen if you have that, that mode of we'll just see what happens, right? Could you imagine getting married? How many of you are married in here? Married. Okay, good. Most of you are married. 22 years I've been married. It'll be 22 years in January. Yeah. And could you imagine if, if, if the, the mantra in my marriage was, well, let's just see how it works out. <laughs> right? How many of you should be married? Right? So, so that's not going to work. At some point, you're going to you're gonna have to make this decision. But 
But for me, like most people do, we always look look outside of where we're at. You know, what else is out there? Is the grass greener on the other side? Um, the grass isn't greener on the other side. You're here for a reason. And I think that, that you know, as we, as we always say, Christopher's probably said this a million times, you're, you're not looking for potential in your business. WFG's not looking for potential. All of you have potential. They're looking for commitment, and commitment's required. But there's going to be a sacrifice, and sacrifice is what we don't like, right? We don't like to, sacrifice implies sacrifice, like something not good. I have to give up something to get something. We want to get it, but we, we don't want to have to sacrifice. Well, here's the thing. If you stay where you're at now, whether it's your WFG experience or your job, you decide, well, this thing's not going to work out. Even though I have plenty of evidence around me that this thing works, all this evidence, all these examples, all these people, we go to the, the big events like Dean just talked about, the annual conventions, and all this evidence that this really does work, but yet somehow it's not working for us, oh, this is too much of a sacrifice. Well, guess what? And this is what I realized about being, I don't know where my picture went. It timed out. What I realized about staying here, do I just need to open it? Yeah. Okay, hopefully it'll come back up. What I need to, okay, there you go. Yeah, you'd be ahead of the technology there. So what I realized about staying here was that there was a sacrifice as well, a sacrifice of dreams not coming true, of the possibilities, of, of the things that I told my wife Dina that I was going to accomplish for our family. That was a sacrifice too, and all of you have that. Yes, there are sacrifices here, okay, but there were sacrifices staying where I was. Do I look like I'm very happy? I literally don't think I'd started with WFG at this point. I don't think... That picture's probably mid-90s, 95, 96, something like that. So I wasn't very happy. Been with American Airlines for a number of years, and, and so I was recruited into the business. And, and during those early years, driving from Torrance all the way up here to the Inland Empire, I literally, I think back in those years and go, I don't know how I survived. I literally don't know how I survived. I think it was realizing that if I don't make it here, I'm not going to make it anywhere. If I don't make it here with all the support, all the people that love and care about you and me and want us to win, the platform that exists now that didn't exist then. I mean, if you guys, and some of you, like Steve and others, have been around long enough to remember back to those days, and God, I remember what a disaster. Like, everything was a fax and a piece of paper, and it would get, I mean, it was just, everything was utter disaster. And if you knew what you have now, uh, you, you would not wish, like, some of you go, Mark, if I worked with Ed Milet, like, you got to work with Ed Milet, I would be further along. Let me help you. No, you wouldn't. Uh, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> most of you would have never. Most of you would have never made it. Like I barely made it. I don't even know how I made it. It was. It was. It was so on the edge. Ed, Ed was so intense and so crazy. <laughs> so here's the thing. So I got. You know, I got sick and tired of driving up to the Inland Empire. Started an office. Some of you know Nikki Cannon, right? Nikki, uh, with Nikki and a guy named Andre Hawkins. Some of you might remember him. He's been around. He's been gone for a while, but he's, he's around for a long time. Started an office in Torrance and existed there. And then I got this wild hair up my butt that I want to move to Colorado. You know, my, my family's from there. Um, I wasn't born there. I was born out here, but raised a little bit in, in, in southern Colorado. Wanted to get back out there. But with American Airlines, you can't get, you, there's no jobs for American out in Colorado. I went, you know what? But I can do that here. I can live where I want to live and do what I want to do. And nobody can tell me, no, I'm sorry, you, you can't do that. That's what American Airlines told me. 13 out of the 14 years I was there, I had a transfer to go to the Denver airport and never got there, simply because there you have to have like a, a, a boatload of seniority. Now, as you guys pass these out, stay focused here. We'll get to those in just a minute. But uh, let me know when they are passed out. Thanks, Christopher. Appreciate you. Thank you. Um, and so, but, but I had this, this crazy dream. But I always talk about crazy dreams. Kids have crazy dreams. You should have crazy dreams. We're, we're ending 2019, going into 2020, which I heard Eric Olson say. Some of you probably heard him say this as well. You know, we all know the perfect vision is 2020, right? We're going into 2020. That should be your perfect vision year. But what drove me in Southern California when I was here, what, what kept me in the game, even though I wasn't making the money I wanted to make, I was making about 50, a little over 45 to 50,000 part-time with our company back in... Uh, 2002, 2003, something like that. Um, but what drove me was the dream of moving to Colorado. All I could think about, all I could see, I'll show you some pictures in a minute. All I could think about, all I could see was mountains. Wanting to get back to the mountains, wanting to get out of LA, the craziness of LA, wanting to get out of the traffic, wanting to get out of all the stupidness. I'm sorry, I don't mean to insult any of you, but I moved there for a reason, right? I moved there for a purpose and a reason. So I moved there in 2003, as Christopher said, knowing, literally knowing nobody. 
But here's another lesson I want you guys to take. And, and, and some of you will employ the lessons that I learned and am sharing with you today in different ways than I did. But here's a level of commitment that at some point you're going to have to make. Right? We talk about you know, making decisions. Right? I made a decision. I'm moving. But guess what? I didn't trust myself. So I was an SMD. I was an SMD when I left. Um, I knew how to make money because I'd made money part-time. I was making almost part-time when American Airlines paid me after 14 years I was making part-time here, right? So, but still, I didn't trust myself. So in 2003, my wife and I made a decision. Things had kind of lined up with our lease and uh, school for my son and all these different things that were going on at that time. And, and she finally bought into this idea because she's a Southern California girl of moving to Colorado to have a better life have better choices for our family. And again, I'll share some of those with you here in just a minute. But we, so we flew out to Colorado. I literally, before I quit American Airlines, before I even sold my home here, I bought a home there, purchased a home there, came back, this was September of, of 2003, quit American Airlines after 14 years, and even with that, scared and nervous and worried as I wrote my resignation letter. I tried every way to Sunday to try to keep a foot in the door of American Airlines and go, well, can I take a leave of absence? Can I do this? Can I do that? And every door that I tried to go through, because I was a, I was a wimp like a lot of us are, right? A, a mental pansy. Even though I had success, I, success is going to require of you greater commitment. And the commitment for me was every door that I tried to go through to try to, to, try to keep the tether, if you will, to American Airlines, to my little safe and secure uh, warm bottle milk pacifier job, every door slammed. Nope, no leave of absence. Nope, you're going to lose your seniority. Nope, yeah. Right, it's all or nothing. I went, okay, here we go. I, I'm going I'm to pursue my dream because there's going to be, a bi I believe, bigger regret if I stay where I'm at than if I, than if I take a risk and do something that most people in my life, most, including my father-in-law, I went, are you sure you know what you're doing? <laughs> Like, this is my daughter you're taking away. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Yeah. And I wrote my resignation letter. I can remember, like, hand trembling after 14 years. Even though talking the big talk, having the big dream, I was still nervous. So stop waiting to not be nervous before you take a step. Stop waiting to not be scared until you take a step. If, if it wasn't hard, if it wasn't scary, then again, the old adage goes what? Every, everybody would do it, right? Everybody would do it. So there's going to be a requirement for you to take steps in fear. But here's what I discovered as I wrote that resignation letter, and I handed it in, like almost like losing my breath. Oh my God, what am I doing? And I already bought the house in Colorado, already was committed there, and was still nervous. But because I had the guts to do something that most people won't do, as I walked towards what looked like an impenetrable wall of fear and of doubt and of worry and of wondering, as I walked up to it, it was like paper mache. I'm like, oh my God, this is no big deal. Turned in my resignation letter, turned in my ID badge. I kept, I kept that one. That's okay. <laughs> I kept that one just as a reminder of where I came from. But as I walked toward it, what, what keeps people away from the wall of making big decisions is it looks like this impenetrable wall of, of concrete, cinder block, reinforcement. I'm never going to make it through. And if you have the guts to walk up to it as long as it's well planned, well prayed through, well thought through, and you've proved yourself part-time that you can win here, and, and, and proving yourself part-time you can win here is making money, I'll talk about that in a minute, then it's a paper mache wall. It fools you. It keeps most people at bay. And they look at this wall from a distance and go, there's no way I can do what so-and-so did. Have the guts, start to put a plan in place in 2020, have the guts to walk toward that wall. I live by this motto. You guys can write this in your notes. I'm willing to do the things that most people are not willing to do. I'm willing to do the things that most people are not willing to do. I'm willing to do the things that most people are not willing to do in order to have choices for my family that most people will never have. I'm willing to do the things that most people are not willing to do or won't do so I can have choices for my family that they'll never have. So people go, oh, yeah, aren't you just lucky? BS lucky. There's nothing lucky about the fear and the worry and the stress and the things that I went through making those choices. But I knew, I knew that if I didn't do it, there'd be bigger regret. I was willing to take that chance. 
And so we walked through this wall of paper mache that looked like this impenetrable wall. We drove out to Colorado and we started. My sister, most of some of you know Rachel. Rachel's a ring earner. Uh, we're going to Hawaii again. Uh, I think my this is like my eighth eighth time going to Hawaii. Rachel's going there for a third or fourth time. You just share experiences with your family that once in a lifetime experiences over and over again, right? So we get to we're going to Hawaii this year. But when I moved to to Colorado, Rachel wasn't licensed. Rachel, every time she made phone calls, somebody told her no, she cried. Some of you look at Rachel, if you know her, she's like, especially if you're a woman, she's like, she's like, I'm not going to speak for all of you, but for a lot of women, she's like the, the woman you want to be from a business standpoint only, right? Just from a business standpoint. <laughs> I, I, all of you are awesome the way you are. So I'm not saying you have to look like her, talk like her. I'm saying from a business perspective, most people go, man, if I, could, if I could have a Rachel on my team or be like a Rachel if you're a woman, that'd be awesome. Well, that's not the Rachel that I moved out to, right? And she'd get on the phone, like, eh, and she'd call me literally cry, like crying. Quentin, with her husband, my brother, would call me go, Rachel's crying again. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? Like, I moved out here, quit my job, and that's what I moved to. That's what I moved to. We would stand in a triangular circle on BPM nights because we'd run like a BPM every week. Um, going, yep, the guests didn't show up again, and we'd stare at each other in a triangle. <laughs> you would have a negative look, kind of like, 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 what did you get us involved in? But I was the one that made the sacrifice, but yet I still had to do it. I still had to go. I still had to make it happen. And so we just, we, we kept working. We kept working, right? Now, where we're at now, I know that's sideways now, so go to this picture. So I went from that. Thank you, by the way, for helping me with this, my technology challenge here. Let's see here. So now... Uh, you know, we went from, we, I went from that to, I don't have a, I'm not a big picture taker, but this last year at the Wealth Wall, I know it's kind of hard to see, you know, but that's our team, now it's even bigger now, because this was last year, not everybody went, but you know, we've got, i uh, got four SMDs, let's see, well, it's, uh, you know, me, obviously, is an EMD, Rachel and Q, Daniel Holt and his wife Chandler, Evan and Jan, uh, Liz and Janice, um, April, April, uh, April Grisham, or April Renee, who's up in Denver, so we've got, Four SMDs, uh, and again, like Christopher said, I'm, I haven't been the fastest to anything. Like I, I'm, like some people look at that are like super successful in this company and look at my income and go, God, how do you live on that? Well, I'll tell you, man, we make some awesome choices. And after 14 years at American Airlines, I was nowhere close to where I am today. And it's not even about the income; it's about it's about capacity. It's about increased capacity. Like, we all have crap we go through in life, right? Mm -hmm. Like, in this company, well, I've been a part of this company, my, my mom, uh, my dad died, my mom died, our house burned down in a fire. I mean, I've gone through some pretty crappy things. But it's, it's because of this company and the mental toughness that it, that it takes you through, it allows you to absorb the challenges that we all face. It allows you to get through some of that stuff. And so, yeah, it was, it, was, it was laying the railroad tracks out in Colorado. And I moved out there because I wanted to create a culture of my own. And some of you might go, man, it's great being in Christmas office, but man, there's some things I would do differently. Great. Don't tell him. Don't complain to him about it. Grow your team. Grow your income to the point where you go, you know what? I'll do what Mark did, and I'll start my own office, and I can have my own culture. But in the meantime, learn everything you can in this environment. <coughs> some people might say, I left a little bit early. Left Ed's base shop, not his base shop, but left his organization a little bit early. But that was what was required. So uh, did that, and, and you know, uh, a few years later, you know, uh, in, uh, in 07, I uh, earned my $100,000 ring. So I moved at the end of 03, really started in 04, okay, because it was September of 03, we moved out there, opened the office in November of 03, not the best time to open an office around Thanksgiving time and Christmas, like this time now. Really started at full-fledged in 04. And by 07, I was over a six-figure income in a brand new market, in a brand new cold market in which Rachel and Q did not have a ton of credibility because I had a system, okay? So um, that was 04, and then, and then just progressed through. I'm not going to go through every jot and tittle of everything that we did. The bottom line is, you know, we're an AMD team now. We'll be CEO this year, absolutely for sure this year before convention. We've got four SMDs. Things are good. Things could be better, but things are great, and we're grateful. We're really grateful for where we're at. So what I want to do, guys, I want to give you some practical stuff as well, and then at the end I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the choices that we've been able to make uh, as, as a family uh, with, with properties that we've bought and some really, really cool things, especially in the last year that we've been able to do as a result of this company. What I want you guys to do now, some of you, all of you are at different levels, right? All of you are at different levels. So I want you to take this worksheet. We're going to start, I'm going to give you some practical things 
to help get a business plan started, or at the very least, not, maybe not even a business plan, for some of you it will be, but some of you already have your business plan started, but I want to give you some practical first steps. They say a journey, the first you know, the, the first step in a journey is you've got to take the first step, right? There's got to be a there's got to be a starting point. And so for some of you, going into the new year, we're at the end of this year. A lot of you have already kind of turned the lights off, right, in your mind, like, oh, there's nothing left to do because we're at the end of the year. And it is towards the end of December. I know Christmas is next week. But in January, everything, everything, a success in the new year starts with a good January. And some of you need what I would call a little bit of a booster. Some of you are brand new, haven't made a dime. Others of you have been around a long time and go, God, I should be further ahead than where I'm at now. But that's okay. That's okay. You know, every, every sports team, every successful sports team, or every professional sports team, whether it's football or baseball, how do they start their season off? Like, think about this. Like, again, I know the Super Bowl is going to come up in February. And there's going to be one team that walks away with the trophy. But is there any team that started this season, right? The metaphor is you going into the new year with this. Hey, guys, um, imagine this is our football team, right? So, hey, uh, guys, uh, we're starting the new season. And uh, really happy to have you here. Really excited about the new season. But um, I've got some uh, maybe not so great news. We're not going to win the Super Bowl this year. So just say, so you know, we're going to give it our best shot, but it's not our year. Like, do you think any coach ever started the year with that conversation? No. No. All of them go, this is our year. This is what we're going to do. And a majority of them are not purposely lying, but a majority of them are not going to make it. So why do I share that? Because most goals are set, most dreams are set, and not achieved. But, but what's the, the journey in it and why they finally get to whatever success is? is that they at least start off with a goal of success, with planning that this is, this is our year. And even if it's not, what does it do? That very thought positions them for the next year to be their year. Right, Monty Holm has told me and Christopher a lot that I've accomplished just about everything that I've written down and set out to accomplish. Almost nothing has been in the time frame, though, that I thought it would happen. So again, don't let that discourage you or frustrate you. Most, again, most football teams start off this year and go, we're going to the Super Bowl. Most of them aren't going to make it. So they, they, they just go, well, we're just going to quit and give up, right? No more LA Rams, no more Detroit Lions, no more Denver Broncos, right? Because we're not going to make it this year. No, they get up and they, they try again. So here's what I want you to do. If you guys look at this worksheet. Yeah, look at the worksheet, okay? So here's, here's what I want you guys to do. Before you start going through the math, so you get out your phone, so you have your calculator, okay? Oh, good. There's an extra one here for me to look at. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to talk to you at different levels. If you're an SMD, MD, senior associate, and you're making consistently three to 5000 or plus per month, maybe it's you're averaging, like Stephen Carroll, 10, 12, 15 grand a month. Or if you're a brand new person, you go, Mark, I've made nothing. Here's how I want you to start this worksheet. And I'm going to get into some very practical things here. I want you to talk, I want you to look at what your income is goal would be in the first year, but don't write it down yet, let me finish my thought here, your income goal that would do what? That would spark belief in you. I know that if you've made nothing here, $1,000 is not a dream income, right? $2,000 is not a dream income. $3,000 is not a dream income. Here's what I'm looking for. For those of you in those spaces I don't recognize, so I know you're probably newer, either you've not made anything, you've made very little. I want you to, I'm speaking to you first, I'll talk to the people that have been around longer. For those of you that haven't made anything a whole lot, or you're not getting a lot of spouse support at home, you've made, sometimes making even too small of a check is worse than making nothing at all, right? Because you finally get a check and you're like, what the hell, $78.30? <laughs> Jeez Louise, for all that effort, I don't want to show this to my spouse, right? It's almost worse than making nothing, okay? I'm talking to you people, okay? And this is why the company has this metric of $1,000. They've done studies that say people that make their first thousand dollars in business have this tremendous arc of, of success percentage increase because they've done that. Why is that? This word right here. So I don't want you, if you're a training associate, an associate, and you've not made a lot of money, don't put down ten thousand dollars there. That's not stretchingly realistic for you. That's like to get to that level, you're probably gonna have to be a senior associate, MD, SMD, before you get there. But for those of you that are newer or haven't made money, I want you to write down a monthly income goal 
that would create in your mind, okay, I think I can do this. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so write that number down at the top under income goal. Those of you that have been around for a while and you're, you're let's say you're, you're, I would say MDs, SMDs, then your number, that I, I mean, if you're, aver if you're an SMD and you're averaging some of you as an SMD, I know I was an SMD and there were months where I'd do like five, six grand a month. Again, not a dream income, it was like paying the bills. So for those of you that are SMDs or MDs and you've made, you, like your belief is, okay Mark, I'm beyond that, like make my first thousand. I'm good, I know I can do that. I want you to write your number down, okay? Of what you're, you guys got your number down? You're gonna, we're gonna go through this worksheet. And don't be embarrassed. Don't worry about what, what anybody else on the side of you goes. It, what, your goal is your goal, right? Don't let anybody steal that from you. If you're in a level, in a, in a mindset where your belief isn't where it needs to be, and you're worried about somebody looking at your $2,000 goal, forget it. Just stay focused on me. Stay focused on what we're going to write here because I want to walk you guys through some numbers here. Okay, so can you, has everybody got their income goal written on their sheet? Yes. Most of you just been staring at me. <laughs> when I want to go on, shut up. I haven't seen you write it down. Can you write it down, please? Okay, you got it written down. Good. All right. So here's the track we're going to use for for income. So if you're a if you're a uh, training associate, you're going to use. We're going to just do the Transamerica track. You're going to use 30 percent. Okay, for these next numbers. If you're a uh, an associate, we're going to use 45 percent. 55 percent for senior associate. Uh, 62 for MD. And then, of course, 80 for SME. This is the Transamerica percentages we're going to use for income, okay? So this is TA. If you're a TA, in a minute, you're going to use 30%. Uh, 45% for associate, senior associate, MD, and then SMD here, okay? So your income goal. So bring your monthly income goal down to that next line under monthly income goal. Divide that. So let's say your income goal uh, is, is 2000 here, I'll, I'll do the math along with you guys. Or 2,500, it doesn't matter. So divide that by your current contract percentage. So it's, uh, if it's 2,000, it'd be 2,000 divided by point, let's say if you're an associate, 0.45%. Does everybody got that? Yes. I'm going to fly through this pretty quickly. It's not that complicated, so treat it, try to get through it so I can get to some other stuff I want to get to. Today. Okay, so let's say your goal is 2,500. Divided by point, I'll do associate 45. That would be 5,555. So it should tell you how many points required to earn that income. So I'm on the second line. Monthly goal, dollar-wise, divided by your current contract percentage, so point whatever, whatever it is up here, based on your level, is the points required. Then take the points required down to the third line and divide that by 2,500, which is the average points per IUL case in our company. Okay, so 5, 000, minus 5,555 divided by 2,500 is going to be 2.22. And round up, just round up, if you get 2.22 or 4.38, whatever your percentage is, just round up to the next number so you have a whole number there. Okay, so, so you know if your income goal, because I want to, my hope here with this worksheet is to give you a little bit of a dose of reality as to why you're not earning what you want to earn, right, to, to build your belief. So it should tell you, uh, 25, so my number is 2.22, call it three apps. So I'm gonna have three applications submitted to make the income I wanna make. Is everybody with me or is there anybody that's totally lost? I'm lost. You're lost? Okay, you're totally lost, that's okay. I'll just get Well, I don't want you guys to be lost, this is not, this is not hard. So I want you to start, start with your income goal. Did you write your income goal down? Yeah. Okay, good. So, so bring that same number, same number, down to the second line. Okay. Just bring it down. Yep. I want you guys to track it. Bring it down to the second line and then divide that income goal. So if it's 2,000, right? Let's say what it is. So it's, let's say it's a, a goal of 2,000 and you're, what are, what are you uh, level wise? Associate or training associate? Training or senior? Associate. Training associate, okay. So you would take, let's say your income goal is 2,000. I'll just use that round number. Divide that by 0 .30. That equals 6,666 is the math in that example. So that's the point value required to earn that income. Okay, so that's how many points you need. I know you might be newer on the team. So if you take, now, now the point value required here, you're gonna bring that number down to this third line. Point value required, just bring it right down here to the third line, and divide that number, divided by 2,500, equals 2.66. 
just round it up to three or whatever the number is. So now, in that first three lines, this worksheet will tell you I've got to submit three applications to earn the money I want to earn. Pretty simple. These are the big questions that people have. Your spouse might have the questions. Hey, why aren't you making any money? You've got to have an answer for that. Well, I'm not submitting any apps. How many apps do you need to submit to make three grand? Right? Or to make a thousand. So this whole deal that you're involved in is actually worth it. You should know that answer, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, I appreciate you guys being uh, have enough guts to say, hey, I'm a little bit lost, but did you track it okay now? Yeah. yeah. Are you guys good? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Good. I really want you to follow along. But here, so that's the production path. You'll notice right under that is the recruiting path. Now, our system says that production always follows recruiting. And the litmus test of a successful business isn't how excited you are. Do you pay your bills with excitement? No. Nope. Or plaques? No. Nope. Or how about those cool certificates? And I love what Chris was doing, the, like the little field tank thing that he's doing, like that, the skill set training. Like, you don't take that to the utility company and go, hey, I got this, I got this certificate. Can I pay my bills with it? You pay it with money, right? So I was always very clear in business when I moved to Colorado that if I'm going to sell the green to my sister Rachel, if I'm going to attract the right people that I want in business, I've got to make money. They don't care how excited I am, how big my team is. I got three recruits this month. Who cares? I don't make money. I, I do. It's a byproduct of it, right? But that's why I, went. I was always focused on if I'm making money, I can sell the dream. Nobody wants, if you're having a nightmare, some of you might, if I ask the question, how many of you are kind of having a WFG nightmare? Some of your hands might go up. Here's the deal. Nobody wants to be part of your nightmare, right? But if you're making money, you go, look, dude, I just made 1,500 bucks part-time last month. Are you serious? Okay, what are you doing? You're that much more confident. So I don't want you to be focused on production. That's why right underneath this is the recruiting path. So all of you should know, how many apps do I need to write at my level to make the kind of money I want to make? Or at least, again, the belief number. You know, Christopher has this worksheet, so you can print as many as you want, unless you, as your, as your income increases, as your promotion increases. But I want you to start with a level of income that, that will help you believe. It's all about belief. So let's go to the recruiting path. Now, what you're going to do, I don't want to lose it in here, you're going to take the the number, the, the uh, point value required from this line right here, whatever point value required, you're going to bring it down to, under the recruiting path, point value required from above. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, so point value required. You're going to bring it down to point value required from above. Right? So, that, so now we're going to talk about recruiting. So now that this lower part of the sheet is how many recruits do I need to have, because we're going to back engineer your income. Right? Is a starting point for the new year. Imagine if you've made nothing, you're frustrated, you're discouraged, you hear Dean talking about the event in 2020, you're like, 2019 was supposed to be my year. And it, it didn't go anywhere. Like if you're that guy or that person, you need to start with, with something that's going to be a shot of belief for you. Okay, is everybody with me? Yeah, point yes. value required, you're going to bring it down to this line here. Now divide the point value required for your goal, divide that by 5,000 points. Or by, I'm sorry, by 5,000. Divide point value required above, divide that by 5,000. Now, why 5,000? You can see in parentheses, I've tried to explain this, point value per recruit. So if the average sale, if I recruit, if I recruit uh, Kritza here, and Kritz is part of my team, it's so cool. Right? Kritza came through, so I got a little bit of Colorado out here in, uh, in, in Christopher's organization. So if I, if, I, if, I, if I bring on board, if I recruit Kritza, all I'm assuming in that 5,000, to give you the explanation, is I'm going to do her FNA, right? And I'm going to do an FNA in her market, her brother Louis. I'm only assuming you're doing two average FNAs in that market. Is that what you should be doing in somebody's market? Way more than that, but it's conservative. That's, what, that's the point there. So point value required divided by 5,000 should give you the recruits that you need. Is everybody with me on that? Did I lose anybody on that first line? And again, round it up, please. So if you get like 3.8, make it 4. If you get 2.5, make it 3. So recruits needed, now you'll notice, just like up here, you're going to bring the recruits needed down to that, that second line under the recruiting path. Okay? The recruits needed. So let's say it's 4. Bring 4 down to that, that uh, fifth line. Divide that by 0.75. Divide that number by 0.75. That will give you the interviews that you need. And it's going to be a bigger number. It should be a bigger number. 
The recruits needed divided by 0.75 gives you the interviews needed. Then just like before, bring the interviews needed down to the next line. Bring it down to the next line. Interviews needed. Divide that number by 0.5. 0 0.50. Again, it, the number should be bigger. That should be corporate overview guests that attend. It should be bigger. So interviews needed divided by 0.5 tells me the corporate overview guess in a month that I need to, to ultimately have the recruits that I need. I should have probably put it up here so I could point to it, but too late for that. Okay, so then corporate overview guess needed, or the, I'm sorry, corporate overview guess attended, bring it down to the next line, that same number, and divide that by 0.3. That's invitations required per month. Invitations required per month. What's that? This is helpful. Okay, good. Well, I hope it'll help as we get to the end here. Okay. So it tells you. So if I'm starting, like, uh, uh, um, what's his name? The guy that wrote uh, Seven Habits. The guy who's top all the guys. Can't remember his name. Covey. That's right, Covey. He says start with the end in mind. Right. So we're starting with the end in mind. I know how much income I want to make, how many recruits I need. Okay, how many interviews do I need? How many corporate overview guests do I need? That's what this is helping you do. So once I have the corporate overview guests that, uh, corporate overview guests that attend, you're going to bring that number down here, divide by 0 0.3, and it's going to tell you how many invitations per month that you need. So just follow the math. Invitations per month that you need. And then again, just like before, take the invitations per month, divide that by four weeks in a month, it gives you invitations per week. Is everybody at least done with the invitations per week? Is everybody through that part? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Now, that second to last line, you're going to change one number for me. Some of you went ahead. That's okay. Go back. You're going to invitations per week times 12. Make it times 15. <laughs> times 15. Here's what, here's what that's representing. So if I know the invitations per week that I need to make, I'm assuming with 15, that's I make 15 calls. Some of those calls I make are messages left. Some of those calls I make are no's. Some of those calls are yeses. So multiply your invitations per week times 15. I'm going to make it a little bit, a little bit harder. Times 15, and that gives you the contact attempts that you need to make on a weekly basis. On a weekly basis. And then last line, the contact attempts, so whatever that number is, times 15, bring it down to that last line, contact attempts per week, divided by five. Five days per week, daily contact. So this tells you how many daily contacts I need to make, and it will reverse engineer your recruiting numbers and your income numbers. And again, like Sam Lynn talks about, prove me right, prove me wrong. Oh, Mark, these numbers seem a little bit kind of sketchy. I don't know if I really believe well, well, have you tried it? What have you done? Like, look at your activity the last three or four weeks, the last three or four months. How many calls have you consistently made? If you know what you need to do to reverse engineer your income, by the way, imagine some of your team that's not here, that's frustrated, or maybe not making the money that they want to make, and they say, hey, even if I was making 500 bucks a month, my wife would at least support me, and my husband would at least support me. Okay, well then start with 500 bucks. And, and see, this is all about, this is all about uh, controlling or defining reality. Some people are delusional. They think like, well, WG is so great. The products we work with are so great. Like, everybody should want to do this. And that's your excuse for why you're not making money because people aren't doing it. How many calls are you making? Really? Did, it, did all of you do it? Yes. How, okay. One of you, one of you share with me uh, the number at the very bottom. Go and make sure you did it times 15. Invitations per week times 15. Contact attempts. Contact attempts per week divided by five. What, who wants to share their daily goal? 15 daily. 15, okay. So one of you has 15, one of you has 30. Okay, I'll use, uh, okay. So 15, what is your name, sir? Silton. Silton. Oh, you're Silton. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's why? That's why? L T O N. T O N. Okay, so Silton was 15, and then, so what's your name? Oh, Phil, right? And then Phil, by the time he got done, was 30. Okay, well, maybe another one. How many? Also 15? 30. 30? 24. 20, 24. What's your name? Samuel. Samuel. Okay, I'll just, I'll just do that one here. So let's talk about some 24, okay? So here's the thing. 
This is what I've gotten our team focused on, by the way. Production is a byproduct of activity, right? Activity. I know results, everybody wants results. Here's the problem with being results focused. If you've been around for a while, if you're a Steve Adams, you go, okay, I know that there's gonna be a lot of no's and like you're managing your expectations. This message is less for you, more for those of you that, that think like, well, I invited a person down here. I, hey Mark, I've been focused. I made calls two freaking days in a row. I made calls two days in a row. Like if you're that guy, this message is for you. Okay. So, Nobody would like put a, get an eyedropper and get some drops of water and drop it in a pipe and go, why do I not have gallons coming out this pipe? As the drops go down the pipe and wipe off the edges of the wall and you get nothing out the other end. That's you, right? You go, well, well I invited one person or I did a two or three appointments, but nothing, nothing is coming out the back end. It's a volume issue. So here's your focus. Here, here's what I want you to write in your notes. If that's you, activity is your result, not results. Focus on activity. That's what the baseline is all about. Chris, we're going to hit on baseline. So I'm going to get finished up with baseline and do a little bit of dream selling, the things that we've been able to do this uh, this last year. But I want to. This is probably my the most important part of my message, especially going into the new year. Activity is the result, not the result. Money is not your result. Recruits are not your result. Applications are not your result. Activity is your result. Okay. Oh, awesome. I didn't actually print those, but that's awesome, Christopher. Thank you. That's, that'll be helpful to see. Activity is your result. And here's why. Here's why. If your results focus, I know all of you want results. Some of you are thinking, Mark, you just said it a minute ago. You don't pay your bills with excitement. You don't pay your bills with recruits. You don't pay your bills with facts. You pay it with money. So why would you not want me to be focused on results? Here's why. Because if you don't, if you're not used to managing the mentality required to succeed here, if you don't get a result, what happens? If you're shooting for a result and you don't get it, what happens? So you stop, why? You cry, yeah, some of us some of us do, I've shed many tears here before, right? You stop, why, okay, why? You get discouraged, it's, it's frustrating. You, you think like, man, I was going for that result, I didn't get it, and what do you do? You stop. How is stopping gonna help you continue toward the goal. It's not. It's activity. So here's the thing. As you guys look at these worksheets. So as you look at these worksheets, I'm going to get back to these numbers in a minute. As they're coming around, we you know, we created, and I think different offices, I mean, it doesn't matter where they came from, but you know, you're getting these sheets with blocks. Here's the deal. Make, make this business a game. Like playing, how many of you like playing games? Like board games, Monopoly, Risk, that type of thing. Okay, a lot of people, a lot of hands went up. Why do you play games? Do you become wealthy on games? Have you got trophies for playing games? Is, are your dreams coming true for playing games? Any of you? No, really. I mean, some people make a lot of money playing video games, right? Like, we hear these young kids like playing video games making a lot of money. It's like, wow, that's crazy. But none of you have made money playing games or your dreams come true? Why do you play them then? Why? Huh? Like to win? Okay, like to win. But what are you winning? Uh, okay, no, no, that's good. No, I appreciate that. So, so Phil said, just like winning, like the challenge. What'd you say? So Pearson, something. The ecstasy of winning, the pride that you get. Uh, yeah, pride, uh, satisfaction, kind of go, oh, in your face, like, oh, like, like talking crap to your friends, right, or whatever it is, right? Like, it's just, it's, is it fun? So can we all boil it down to, it's kind of fun, Mark. It's just fun. Can I just have some fun? Yeah, absolutely. So guess what? Why not have fun here? Why not have fun here? It's not like you march a little man around the, the, the table and go, oh my God, money starts falling from the roof, right? Or your dreams come true. You march a little man around the table and you roll dice and you go, oh man, this is fun. But nothing really comes of it. Nobody sends you a trophy or a award or nothing. But you still do it, right? What if you could think, have that mentality about WFG? What if you have that mentality, marching your little man around a playing board and just go, you know what, I don't give a crap if somebody says yes, somebody says no, I'm just playing the game. I'm filling in boxes. And some of you, maybe haven't heard me expound on this, and some of you may know the key already. I've added a few things to the key, but here's the basic key. So if your number is 15, what this means isn't 15 points. This is 15, as it says on your worksheet, contact attempts. Contact attempts, right? 
So, what, what's a possible contact attempt? I make a call, what's a possibility? Okay, somebody says no. Somebody says no. But if I, if I get a no, what have I done? I've, what, I've spoken to him, right? I've spoken to that person. What's another one? Voicemail. It could be a voicemail or a message left. What's another? A yes. A yes? Yeah. Wow, what about that? I can get a yes. Okay, here's the possibilities. Here's the thing I want you to shift your mindset on. All of you are looking for this. This is called a result. Mm -hmm. Do we want that? Of course we do. But I don't want your mentality, your belief to be based on the result of yes. Why? Why do I not want you focused on that? Because why? There's going to be a lot more of the other stuff. There's going to be a lot more of the other stuff. That's true. But that's not the real reason why. But I appreciate the answer. What else? Because activity is but my question is, why don't I want you focus on that? I think it would create like a uh, you'd be very scared, your man. Uh, the other person said no, and then you'd be very scared, and then team in, and all of a sudden your activity gets down. So you're 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 kind of going around it, uh, yeah. but that's along the line of what I'm trying to get at. If you don't get it, you're going to be more discouraged. Than that, right? Yeah. Here's, here's what it comes down to. Can you control getting the yes or no? Can you control it? No, I can't control it. I can't control, I want a yes, but I can't control it. If somebody goes no, I go, no, you really mean yes. Right, and then you start like yelling at them on the phone, like, give me a yes. Like, you, can't, you just can't control it. So I, you always have this adage, don't worry about things that you can't control. If I can't control it, why am I going to let that control me? And guess what? If I'm results focused and I don't get a yes, and then I go, screw this, this doesn't work, I'm going to go fold my socks or do something less stressful, then you never get to where you're going. So here's the deal. If you're that person, you go, Mark, that's me. That's like, that's exactly me. If I don't get a yes, or I make calls and I don't get any results, if I don't get any results, which is this, then I'm discouraged and I stop. This is why, this is why I've gotten our team focused on, this is why we've promoted the SMDs we've promoted and have the success that we've had, especially in this last year and a half, is I've gotten everybody focused on an activity result. Marching my little man around the playing board of WFG and going, I don't really care who says yes, who says no. I'm going to do my job, and my job is simply to reach out. If they say no, who cares? So here's the key, and here's how you're going to play the game. You guys ready to play the game? Yes. All right, here's how you're going to play the game. I call somebody. I call Phil. I go, hey, Phil, my name's Mark. We don't know each other. Here's what I'm calling. Your name is referred to me. Uh, I know you've got a great background. Our company's expanding. We're looking for people. I wanted to find out. If your options are open, I'd be really interested in talking with you. Just give me a no. And I'd really be interested in talking with you. Are you keeping your options open? Oh, really? Well, okay, Phil, I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, and, and let's say I try to overcome. The, the, the whole point of this is not to learn how to necessarily overcome the objection right now. But bottom line is Phil says no to me, right? Mm -hmm. Phil says no to me. Here's my mentality. Even me, as long as I've been around, the minute somebody picks up the phone, I go, cool, I got two points. I don't care what you say. I got two points. I'm trying to hit my point goal. So Phil says no to me. He's courteous and he's nice. I try to overcome it. He says no. I'm like, okay, hey, Phil, if anything changes in the future, please let me know. Who do you know? Maybe I try to get some referrals. Bottom line is, most of you that are focused on results, if Phil says no to you, you're like, oh, man, that sucks. I was really counting on Phil. Right? I go, oh, that doesn't matter. I'm going to do, so no, so no implies I've spoken to somebody, which is two points. So the key is two S's. So guess what? On my playing board, I get to put two S's. I got two points. If my goal is 30 points in a day, Phil says no to me. Hey, screw it, man. I got two, I got two points. I don't care. I'm just going to make another call. I'm just playing a game. All right, let's say I call David. Hey, David, my name's Mark. I go through it. Now, let's say David goes, yeah, I'd be open and, you know, say yes to me. Yes. Yes. All right. Awesome. So I schedule a time for David to come in for a one-on-one -on -one or a BPM invite. It doesn't matter. David could be on the list of a new recruit and I set an ASAP appointment. It doesn't matter. But if David says yes to me, great. I set an appointment, right? That's three A's. Okay? Let's say I, I get the, uh, like what we get, Tim said, what we get a lot is voicemail, right? People let's let messages go to their phone or their voicemail, especially if they don't recognize the number. So if I leave a message, I look at that as a seed planted. Right? The seed planted. Is there a chance that that person can call me back? Yeah. 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 If there's, is there a chance that they won't call me back? Yeah. 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 But do I care? No. no, I don't care. Because I'm just I'm just marching my little man around. Like if I roll the dice, I, I, I'm looking for the six. But if I get if I get a one, 
and whatever. I get, I get, I get to move along, right? So, so if I leave a message, it's one M. So your sheet, so on, on a daily basis. So going back to these numbers here, this is 15 calls, not 15 points. So if your goal is is 15 calls out, even even with this, or for Silton, Silton, you can't control. Somebody says yes, no, or voicemail. You can't control it, right? So. With 15, most of the time, when you're making calls, you're going to get a mix of all three of these. I would say with, with a goal of 15 contacts, your points should be somewhere, your point goal should be somewhere between 20 to 25 points on a daily basis. So whoever your leader is, I think it's Stephen Carroll, I believe, this is what they should be holding you accountable to. And literally, it'd be easy. Let's say Silicon brings in a sheet and there's a bunch of this. I can count this up and know how many calls Silton made, right? This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine calls, but how many points? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. So that's sixteen points with nine calls. Does that make sense? Yes. So here's so here's the thing. If you're if the, the sheet that you just went through is 15 contacts. So if you're willing to swallow that pill and go, you know what? How long would it take me, whether it be business cards, prospecting, talking, how many calls, how long would it take me to make 15 calls? Even if it was an hour, if this is what you reverse engineered on that sheet, Sultan, and, and you go all the way back up to your income, and whatever that belief number is that you have that would cause you to believe even more, whatever time it takes you to do that, I mean, 15 calls would most of us say this is an hour or less. Yeah. Yeah. You go, I don't know if I have an hour or less to have my dreams come true. Or, or, to, or to start to work towards them. Then, then you're, in the wrong, you're in the wrong mindset to begin with. Right? If you're like Phil and, you're, and, and, and your number is 30, this would probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of, I would say, 40 to 45 points like this. Right? Because we're tracking them like this. If I speak to somebody, they get two points. Right? That's one call, but two points. This is one call, but three points. And the incentive in the point system is that you're going to try harder, right? Some of us go, hey, I'm going to call really early where nobody will pick up. I'll just leave a post. They'll call me back because I'm scared to talk to me. If I know, hey, I'm going to try to call during prime times because I want people to pick up, I don't care what they say because I'm focused on just scoring points like you are on that Monopoly game that a lot of you raise your hands on that you're going to play with the Christmas season with your friends, right? Samuel, your, your, your goal was 24 contacts. Now remember, when I say 24 contacts, it's 24 attempts. Some of those are going to be messages, some of those are going to be no's, some of them are going to be appointments, yeses, right? So I would say with 24 points, this should probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of, of uh, and because I know you're newer, probably around 32 to 35 points. Now why do I take you through that? Is, you, is, is number one, to help manage your expectation. If, if you're sitting here and you're reverse engineered to points, you're like, man, that's a, dude, that's a lot, man. That's like 24, 30. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, well, guess what? This is what it's going to take. This is reality. If you go to a trainer, you go, look, I want to lose weight. I want to be ripped. I want to look good. Okay, here's what it's going to take. Ooh, I don't know if I want it that much. <laughs> then your trainer's going to go, well, okay, let's give you the, instead of the three-month plan, let's give you the year plan. Maybe you're not. You're not as committed as you think you are. But, but here's the thing. I, I've been pretty good at defining reality for our team. And I hope that this has helped define reality for you. And if you look at the sheet again, if you look at some of my leaders, like Evan Janice is probably the best one. I, I probably have some sort of an a example of it on my computer. But literally every week in our full-timers, he turns in a sheet. And this thing every day is, is filled up. His base shop in this last year has done a little over, or just under, or right at 100, 100 recruits um, in his base shop. Uh, his income is up. His wife, Lizzie, and him and Lizzie are working together. She's fully licensed, and he's committed. And he was a guy that would come to me, like, literally almost crying when people would say no to him. Now he's like, screw it, man. Like, he'll come together and go, hey, guess what? This guy, like, totally cussed at me and dropped the F-bomb on me. And he just laughs about it now. It, like... It's capacity. It's increasing your capacity. Don't worry about what people say to you. And by the way, be reasonable in your approach as well, right? Be professional, be reasonable. 
But if somebody's all pissed off that you're calling them up to give them an opportunity, let that be their problem, not yours. Right? If, if I spoke to somebody and they cussed me out, I'd go, sweet, man, I got two points. That ain't my phase, man, I got two points. But if you're, not fo if you're focused on results rather than activity, you know what you do? You go, ooh, that didn't feel good. I don't like the way that feels. I'm not doing this anymore. This isn't for me. And then you let some Yahoo that, you'll, yeah. that you don't know, that you'll never know, right, dictate your family's goals to you. Would you let some stranger come up to you and go, hey, man, you don't, I don't, I don't know you, but you don't deserve to win. You're not going, you're not going anywhere in your life. You'd probably like, punch me in the face if I, if I said that to you, right? <laughs> right? But yet, we let people do that to us every day when somebody says something we don't like or it doesn't go the direction we want it to go, and we stop doing what we need to do to allow our dreams to come true. Play the game. Just play the game. Don't be worried about the result. Can you guys do that? Yeah. Yes. yes. Awesome. All right. Any questions for me on, uh, Christopher, on time, I'm not sure where we're at. A lot of people are moving around, so I, I can. We're just grabbing our guests. You're good. You're What's good. That? We're just grabbing the guests. Keep going. Okay. You're good. So are there any questions on, so this worksheet right here. So if I'm, uh, I'm sorry, what's your name? Samuel. Samuel, that's right. If I'm Samuel, right, then, then your goal, Samuel, on a weekly basis, when I go up here to Monday, you'll look. I'm a part-timer. My goal is to get to 32. That's my goal, 32 points. And I'll bet as you do, as you focus on 32 points of production, right, then you'll end, you'll, it'll end up being that you'll have 24 calls that you make, right? And just do that consistently. Don't, especially early on, don't worry about the results. If you worry about the results, the results will kill you. Okay? So are there any questions for me on yeah. just real quick to clarify? So the daily contact that is as you make the call to the yes, it's three points and that's and then daily contact with Yes. So that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah. I understand like fifteen, thirty, and twenty four, but the the number of levels that you get for those. Okay. So so let's go down here to answer your question. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is nine calls. Nine contact attempts as it as it is listed on this sheet here, right? Nine contact attempts, but how many points is this? The points in the game of WFG are always going to be more than the actual contact attempts. Each square is a point. Each yeah, each square is each square is a point. So, so I know if my goal, let's say my goal was nine calls. This happens to be nine calls. My goal on a daily basis is nine contact attempts. Then I should have, then I'm gonna, my ultimate goal should be scoring 15 points. Right? Or 16, actually, this is 16 points. So the points are always going to be higher. Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, why don't you just go, why don't you just keep it simple and just go, well, look, if this is the number, that's the number. You know why? Because if, if, if I talk to somebody and the person goes, hey, man, screw you, don't ever call me back again, I don't like you, don't call me about your deal, like, let's say it's a really, like, not a friendly call, or it's a no, like a hard no, and you get discouraged, right? You know what the worst thing in the world is? Is if you're, if you're again, you, you have your contact sheet, and, you're, and you've got your little boxes, and let's say your goal is 30 points in a day, and I have a really rough conversation with you, Phil, right? And I'm on the phone with you for 10 minutes, let's say, trying to turn you around. You're like, no, man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just not interested. I get off the phone. <sighs> One. Okay. 29 more. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, now let's say I have a great conversation with you. You go, yeah, Mark, I'm ready to come down to the meeting. Okay, cool. Now I'm excited about that. But I go, okay, two. All right, meaning if I don't have a point system, I'm checking off one call at a time. Oh, I see. You guys understand that? It, it, it's, it, to me, the game is controlling my mentality. I'm just scoring points. It's like a video game. Some of you play video games. You go, I'm scoring points. Like, who cares? Like, what are you getting for scoring points? Nothing. It's just fun. Yeah, exactly. Why not make it fun? Because, again, I'm trying to, even me, I'm trying to control my mentality. When I look at my sheet, my daily point goal is 40 points a day. Me. Okay, 40 points a day. So if I have a rough conversation with somebody, I'm on the phone with them for 10 minutes, and I get off the phone and I go, one, 39 more, and back at the dial. Like, to me, for me, it's, that's not encouraging. I like to know, like, hey, okay, if I'm not able to turn somebody around, at least I get two points for it. <coughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Does, that help, does that help help you guys understand psychology? Yes. What's that? Each box is a point, but with the different activities, no yes or voicemail, will yield me different points, right? 
Because again, it's about activity. It's just about activity. All right. Let me see if I can. So as I, it's 11:20. So I'll, I'll I'll try to end here pretty quick. But let me do. What's that? Oh, yeah, the bottom part. Well, the bottom part is where you're actually logging your activity, meaning the, the yeses. So if I have a yes, if I get a yes, let's say it's an ASAP appointment, I'm going to put uh, Bob, uh, Bob Smith, uh, the date of the appointment, the time of the appointment, and then the source. So let's say it's an ASAP, well, I'm training you. So I'd put Bob Smith, the date, the time, source, David Rees. Yeah, on Monday. Right? So it's just the lines on the bottom are just to track your activity. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. All right, any other questions on that? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Because the employee, the, here's, here's why it's hard. You know why it's hard? Is it Bill or Bill? Bill? Bill, here's why it's hard. Because the employee mind is like this. I work an hour, I get paid for an hour. I do this, I get that. I do this, I get that. I do this, I get that. Employee minds have a hard time with, man, I'm doing all this. I'm not getting a lot. Right? And this is where discouragement sets in or frustration sets in. The entrepreneur mind realizes, hey, there's going to be a lot of upfront groundwork laying, laying the tracks, laying the railroad tracks, and there's going to be times where I'm not going to be paid. I mean, talk to a business owner. Right? They go, hey man, I, I was in the red for, you know, I was in the red for the first five years, not paying myself anything right. until I finally got over the hump. Like that's yeah. reality for. But the employee mind, we all come in here as employees. They go, I've given an hour, I should get paid for an hour. I gave another, hour, I should get paid for another hour. That's why we struggle with with this, all this stuff. But if you have a way to manage the expectation in your brain and reverse engineer the numbers and go. I've just got to be willing to do the activity. Yeah. The, the results are a byproduct of the activity, but if I stop doing the activity, I'm never going to get the result. I'm never going to get it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay? So I know we're at 1120. I don't want to take too much more time, but are there any other questions you guys have uh, regarding regarding the mentality, the worksheet, or any of that other stuff? Sure? Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Yep, absolutely. Well, I hope that helped, guys. I'll, I'll, here's, what, here's what I will land on. Let me share a couple of fun things with you guys. Um, so we, you know, in, in Colorado, we, uh, I shared a few things about our story. We, uh, you know, we lived in Torrance, and we were just kind of the standard neighborhood in Torrance. We moved out to Colorado. I've always wanted to live on land, and so we, we, uh, were, we were in a, um, help me with that. <laughs> the wires doesn't stay up there. But we, uh, we live in a, in a forest area called Black Forest. And that's where uh, a fire came through in 2013. It like wiped out the area, and our house was included in that. We got to rebuild a dream house, of which I don't have a lot of pictures of, on it of, of that. But we got to build a house from scratch. And and the cool thing with that with that whole story was that a lot of people are in that fire. The the fire came through so bad it wiped out all the trees. We had five acres of nothing but trees, uh, pine trees. Wiped it out, burned the house down, and uh, and a lot of people had to rebuild on their same property. So the insurance company. They will insure the home, they will not insure the land. So, oh, it's not coming up, okay. So trees, for some reason, are not insurable, okay, but homes are. And so, but we got to buy a whole new piece of property, uh, five acres, treed, and built our dream home on that. So that was fun. That was back in uh, 2014, 2015. And then uh, last year, okay, perfect, thank you. It should be up there, okay. So last year, some of you that were welcome have heard the story, we, we purchased a, uh, we decided that we wanted to buy a, 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 a kind of like a little getaway cabin up in the mountains. So let me show you that real quick here if some of you have not seen it. And, and the reason I'm sharing this stuff with you guys is that it's like WFG gives you choices. Like the choice of not having to build on a burned out piece of land, our dream home. We get to buy a new piece of property, pay cash for that, and then build our dream home on that. That's a choice that the average employee doesn't get the choice of, but because I paid the price, like you guys are paying the price now, what did I start off by saying? I'm willing to do the things most people are not willing to do in order to have the choices most people are not willing to have. And so this was another one of our choices. And it's kind of a funny story behind all this. Let me see if I can pull this up here. Uh, Spring Valley. Okay, so uh, November of last year, November of last year, we found this home uh, and I know it's kind of hard to see, it's on, uh, on realtor.com here, but 
this, this, it's like a cabin. It was built in 99, so three bedroom, uh, two bath cabin just to have. And you can kind of see it. I know it's not the greatest picture, but there's a, a big body of water. There's a lake that's right across the, uh, right across the road from our home. So I see mountain home. I see mountain you see mountain biking? Yeah, see okay, yeah. There's all kinds of trails and fun stuff. We have a hot tub. And so we bought this last year, and in July, uh, let's see, we bought it in November of last year. July of this year, um, we get this frantic email from our homeowner association where, we, where this home is that says, hey, guys, kind of sorry to tell you, the dam broke, because the there was a dam holding this, oh, you know, this lake. Oh. The dam broke. Uh, the lake's draining. Sorry. <laughs> right? Oh, right. The lake's draining. What the hell? Like that's why we bought this place. Right? That's one of the reasons we bought this place. So that was a little bit discouraging. But then I swear to you guys, like it's like providential. Literally that same day, let me show you something else. That same day, um, the real estate agent that we bought that home from, it was the same day we were visiting actually out here in Southern California when when this happened. Um, that same day, the real estate agent that we worked with kind of jokingly sends us an email. Let me see. I can't talk and do this thing. I'm sorry. Sends us an email and says, hey, thinking about you guys, thinking about you guys, this just went on the market. We're like, oh, wow. Okay. Well, and you can't really see it. There's kind of a cool log cabin uh, cabin up there in uh, not far from, about an hour outside of where we live in the mountains. But look! Look at what's look at what's right outside. A lake. A lake. <laughs> so the same day we find out that the lake, Daniel Holt teases me. He goes, "Hey, Mark, the, you know the, the lake ran away." Ha ha. Okay, great. So the same day that happened, uh, the real estate agent texts us this, and literally I go, I'm looking and going, "How much is it?" And hey, Todd, go up there and check it out. He goes up there and checks it out. Uh, on our way back from our trip out here, it went under contract. We're like, Dang it, this home went under contract. <clears throat> and look, pro um, on our way back to, to Colorado, it fell out of contract. So by the time we got to Colorado, it was back on the market. We went up there and looked at it. And I could see the look in my wife, Dina. We've been married 22 years. I can see the look in her eye. She's looking out the window. Let me show you the windows on the inside. So there's the, there's the lake. So this is the oh. view from the deck. Wow. This lake is, is huge. It's much bigger. And you can actually go on this one. The other one you can't go on. You can't fish on. It's just it's there to look at. It's really pretty. This one you can actually go on, and you can see mountains in the back there and everything. Uh, but uh, but here's the ins the inside of the home has all these this bi these big wraparound windows that overlook the lake. And I can't see the lake from here, but you can overlook the lake. And we're sitting on this couch, and I can just see the look in Dina's eyes. And I'm, I'm like, no, 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 no. Slow down. <laughs> just slow down. We just bought this house. The other one, me, the other house. Like, just slow down. And I if. if and here's the thing about choices. Like we save a lot of money. We're not. We're not. We're by far not even close to the most successful people in WFG. Like not even close. Like not even close. But sitting in this house that day, looking at her, knowing what just happened with the other one, we put an offer on that house that day. Right. So within a year, so we bought this one too. <laughs> yeah, so that's ours too. So now we have two lake houses. The other one we're doing a VRBO until they figure out the dam and, and can build it back. Wow. But that's an example of like choices. How many of you have have travesties, challenges, uh, negative things happen in your life that you go, you know what? Money would fix this. Money's not everything, but crap, it fixes a lot of stuff. <laughs> Like, we were totally bummed that the lake drained out of the place. Like, I don't even think about it now. We hired a, a, a Vacasa who does vacation rentals, and, and that thing just rents all the time now. The people that rent it, they don't give a crap. They didn't know the lake was there. It's just a big <laughs> hole now, right? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter. Okay, here's one last thing I'll share with you guys. Uh, I promise, one last thing. So kind of cool, some cool dream selling stuff. We're go again, we're going to, Hawaii, we're going to Hawaii again this year. We qualified for the St. Martin trip with Dan, all those guys. And uh, we're, the office we're in now, uh, we've been there since the end of 2014. So we find, signed a five-year lease in the office we're in now. It's like a 30, like a 3,700 square foot, almost 4,000 square foot office. Not, not really big, but we got like 14 offices, big Mozone training area, BPM room, all that. And the, the property has switched hands two times since we've been there. And the new owners, and, and maybe like out here, real estate has changed a little bit in, in Colorado, Colorado Springs. And so we're getting ready to renew our lease 
at the at the place we're in now, and our real estate agent comes back, he says, Mark, like here's the price per square foot, and they want to do a triple net lease. Triple net means now we're paying for utilities and everything. Like right now we have a gross lease. I don't care. Like leave all the lights on, turn the air conditioning <laughs> on, turn the heater on, we don't pay for it. No, I, I don't do that. But, but we have a gross lease. But now it's like, no, it's a triple net lease, and your rate's gonna double. Like your 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 rent is gonna double. Like, yeah, that's a bummer, you know, especially if I'm renting it. So, so I told Aaron, our real estate agent, I said, man, I said, should we, like, why don't we just go, why, why don't we just go buy a building? And he's like, well, yeah, you, I, you can do that, I suppose. <laughs> you know, and so, um, let me take it off for now. So, so here's, here's the cool part of the story. So, we're, in, we're in, in, in Las Vegas at the convention, and I tell Rachel, I said, hey, because we used to lease from a place down the street from where we're at now. I said, you know what? I don't know why I'm getting this funny feeling. I should call Greg, who's the previous building owner, and just ask him about his building. This building where it is, it was an older building, but it's really clean. It's got good bones. It's, it'd be a really like, like uh, redo, like uh, we revamped it. And so we get back from convention. Remember, we just heard that our, our lease is going to double. So I call Greg, and I say, hey, Greg. I go, hey, it's Mark Onstead. Do you remember me? He's like, oh, hey, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. How's it going? Is this old guy just happy-go-lucky. And I said, hey, uh, I, got, man, I got just a crazy question for you. I'm really, I, I hope, please don't take offense to it or anything, because I don't know how things are going, but by any chance, Greg, I, is, are you gonna, would your building be for sale by any chance? Or is there, you know, are you looking at maybe retiring at some point and putting your building up for sale? And it was this long pause at the end of the line. He goes, wow, it's, it's really odd that you're calling me today. I'm putting my building on the market tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> No way. And so, so, so we decided, let's see if I can do this. So, so Rachel and I decided, because Rachel has a lot of property, I guess it's going to be not the greatest picture in the world, but let me see if I can, if I can get this, if I can get this to a better, oh, if I do it this way. Oh, there we go. That is better. Thank you, technology people. So anyway, this is not the best, the best picture in the world, but this building went on the market, and again, choices. Like, I would much rather, if I'm going to pay rent somewhere, I'd much rather pay rent to myself, yeah. build some equity, like owning a home, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we say we're owners in, in, of our business, but you don't own the building that you're in. Well, now we're going to own the building that we're in. This is a, about 11,000 square feet. It's a two-story building. It's kind of hard to see because there's a lot of cool landscape in this big tree. But I know last night I was playing with it. I, so it's on a big, uh, it's on Union Boulevard here, so it's a, kind of a busy street, so we have a lot of exposure. Um, there's a way that I got this thing to zoom, zoom over. No, I was just trying to, oh, there's another angle. Yeah, there's an angle in front there. There we go. That's probably about as good as I'm going to get right there. But long story short, long story short, uh, we had the choice of going, you know what? I'm not going to pay. So our rent was going to go from, uh, our rent was going to double. It was going to be close to uh, six grand a month, right? which in Southern California is probably not that much. But our rent was going to double to almost six grand. Our payment on this whole building, uh, the, the payment will be uh, about forty six hundred bucks. But with triple nets and the, and all the other stuff that goes into owning a building, it'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of, of eight grand a month to own the building. But we'll have three other tenants. So that, again, the, again, why do I share that story with you? Some of you go, man, that'd be cool to own the building that I'm in, have tenants that are below, because we have three or four other tenants, other businesses right. that will be paying rent, we'll have more square footage on that upper story <coughs> of that building, we'll have about five to 6,000 square feet to run Transamerica, and as those other tenants leave, if other teammates want to rent the, that could be a whole 11,000 square foot Transamerica building that we own. And if we outgrow that, then we'll start kicking people out. Go get your own damn office, right? Get out of my building. <laughs> but, but these are some fun choices. I mean, in the last year, we bought two properties, those, rent, those homes I showed you in the mountains, and, and a building, and it's it's and we save a, a boatload of money. You know why? Because I made the choices that most people are not willing to make. You're in the same boat that I'm in. You're in the same company that I'm in. We want you to win just as much as we want to win. If you're not going to win here, let me help you. You're not going to win anywhere. There's no way something is going to be easier that has the return on investment that you have here. On top of that, helping people. You know, my sister uh, was at a grocery store making about 30 grand a year back in, in the early 2000s when I moved out to Colorado. I told Rachel, I said, hey, let's, let's turn your monthly and your annual income into your monthly income. She's like, what are you talking about? What kind of 
deal are you involved in? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> right, like last month, I think she made over 48,000 bucks last month. Wow. You know, and it's my sister. You know, and so when you, when you look at what you do here, it's not just about you. It's not just about even the clients that you serve. But why do we have this recruiting model? Why do we want to be focused on this activity? Because these people that turn into the A's, or maybe the S's that eventually turn into the A's, playing the game of WFG allows you to involve people in something that they have no idea what it can turn into. Right? Rachel and I are going on partners on that. Don't wait, she wouldn't be able to do that with me if it wasn't for WFG. If it wasn't for the same opportunity that you're now sitting in. But you've got to have big goals and big dreams. You've got to manage your expectations. As you work, look at these worksheets that we went through today, ask yourself this question. Am I willing to do this work? If you're willing to do the work that we outlined there for you, I can promise you, if you're consistent with it, you can't go, well, I did that for a week. It's like telling your trainer, I worked out and ate right for a week, but then, the other, then I stopped working out and ate Twinkies for the rest of the year. Well, you're not going to get the results you want. It's got to be consistent. And as long as you're willing to be consistent, you'll win here. So uh, I'm done. I hope you guys got some things out of the training. Uh, love this team. Love being part of your team, guys. Have a great Merry Christmas and all that good stuff. Thank you.